When we look back at the history of football boots, there were certain ones along the way that really changed the game in terms of how football boots would progress moving forward. And I don't think there was any boot quite as influential, especially when you're talking about modern football boot history, as the 2010 F50 Addy Zero it redefined what it meant to be a speed boot, not just because of how cool looking it was, but because of how ridiculously light it was, way lighter than any of its competitors. And inside this box, I have a remake of that OG 2010 F50. So this is the F50 Ghosted Addy Zero that you can see here in the original black and yellow colorway that released just in time for the 2010 World Cup. Crazy that these are back, crazy that they're here in original form. It's just a crazy pair of football boots. As part of what Adidas is calling their memory lane pack, they've taken their brand new and excellent tooling from the new X Ghosted boots and paired it with classic F50 Addy Zero uppers available in a variety of different colorways, all limited edition and all retailing for $250 all also sold out by the way, which is a bit of a bummer, but I figured I would make a video showing you this anyways, because this is arguably the one that's most true to the original, not only because it's the exact same colorway as the very first F50 Addy Zero, but it's the exact same synthetic upper as well, which is just pretty unbelievable at how well it works with sole plate tooling from basically 10 years in the future. Admittedly, I don't think they're quite as light as the originals were, which really just goes to show how impressive that football boot was 10 years ago, but it doesn't take away from the fact that this is an extremely cool pair of modern remakes. And I wanna go over all the details for you in today's video, including how they fit and feel on feet. So if you wanna get a better look or just kind of a stroll down memory lane for those that were fans of the OG F50 Addy Zero, this was a childhood favorite of mine. Stick around, watch the entire video. And if you are interested in a pair, unfortunately, like I mentioned, they are sold out, but I will leave links down below in the description to the X Ghosted Point One, as well as X Ghosted Plus review pages on my website where you'll be able to pick up the regular modern speed boot option or alternative to the F50 Addy Zero below their normal retail prices, both of which are excellent boots. As always, if you guys do end up enjoying this video and perhaps would like to see some of the other F50 remake colorways that released alongside these as part of the memory lane pack, don't forget to support this one with a like and let me know which one specifically you'd like to see down below in the comment section. And of course, if you're new here watching for the first time and don't wanna miss out on weekly content on everything football boots, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. Sick voice crack, bro. Now, as for the boots themselves, I wanna start by doing this because this for me is what makes this such a special remake. If you put it side by side with an original 2010 synthetic F50 Addy Zero, you can see that they are virtually identical. They have given us the exact same upper down to the construction, down to the material, down to all the little details. Even the heel liner is exactly the same as the OG. And despite these two boots basically being 10 years apart, it's crazy to see how similar they actually are. And of course this is using the modern tooling, but really, the design in terms of the core philosophy of what this football boot introduced 10 years ago still remains true and still remains very effective within the Adidas brand 10 years later. Now the 2010 F50 Addy Zero came in two different upper variations. There was the synthetic model, which is what you saw in most of the advertising and a fair amount of pros did wear them in the synthetic version. That was the lightest option after all but it was also very popular amongst general consumers as well as professionals to wear the leather version of the boot, which was, I actually have them, let me go grab them. Remember this box? So inside this box, I have actually the exact same launch colorway, but in the leather upper variation, which I might as well show you since I went and grabbed them. And you can see instead of featuring synthetic all the way through, which you still have, through the midfoot on the lateral side, as well as the heel, 
the tongue as well as all of the area that you can pretty clearly see has some stitching and some puffiness is made out of a leather material. And it's not kangaroo leather. It's not the most premium leather that we've ever seen on a pair of top end boots from the Adidas brand, but it gave you the experience of not just a soft leather football boot, but one that was exceptionally lightweight in comparison to anything. Not only was this lighter than any other speed boot out there, but it was also leather. And that's something that drew a lot of people in to the F50 Addy Zero series. But if you wanted the thinnest, lightest, most true barefoot sensation, you would opt for the synthetic model. Personally, as a kid, I had one of each because I just needed to try them. The leather model was probably a little bit better, but looking back, I was just all about them being as light as possible. So I did prefer the synthetic model even though I was wrong. And speaking to the impact of this boot a little bit more, this was technically the first colorway that came out just in time for the 2010 World Cup. And of course, they did also release kind of this weird gold colorway with like a brown rim along the bottom. Some players wore that. And then of course, Messi famously wore the chameleon purple colorway, but the vast majority of the pros in the 2010 World Cup wore this exact color, which was the main color for the Adidas World Cup pack that year. Pretty unexceptional, the Predator X, not exactly a great looking football boot, and the Addy Pure 3, about as generic looking an Adidas football boot you could have. But the fact that this football boot did something so different from anything else. It was so much lighter and so much thinner that the colorway didn't matter. Black and yellow, while it's not ugly by any means, it's pretty understated by today's standards. You probably wouldn't have a successful launch regardless of what brand you were launching in such a simple color palette, but this didn't matter. The boot was that good, people didn't care. And I like the fact that they remade this colorway in particular, because it is, actually the first one. Nonetheless, the synthetic upper is very true to the original in that it's super thin. I definitely think that what you get now on either the fluoro skin or mirage skin uppers of the new X ghosted boots is definitely thinner, but this still feels nice and I don't wanna say pliable, I don't wanna say soft, but it feels wearable by today's standards. That's something that I was really impressed with when I put these on, because often when you take an older style upper and you pair it with a newer sole plate, sometimes they feel like they're a little bit mismatched, but surprisingly, this actually feels quite good. I don't think it's quite as good as the X Ghosted Point One if you're talking about a modern speed boot from the Adidas brand that also has laces. And it's actually pretty surprising at how similar they actually fit in terms of how the upper lays across the top of your foot. I've always had this little bit of extra volume in this area because of the way the lacing system is cut. That remains true on this remake pair, which I thought was pretty nostalgic. Nonetheless, the touch on the ball is very thin if you're looking for that barefoot feel. And the upper for the most part has this kind of shiny, somewhat slick finish to it, but you'll notice right here, kind of to partner the texture on the famous 2010 Jabalani World Cup ball, you have that same texturing kind of scattered across the striking area of the foot because what was also kind of unusual about the F50 Addy Zero, especially being a speed boot, is that it kind of had an off-centered lacing system being pushed slightly to the lateral side, which gave you this really clean surface to strike the ball. And I can't stress enough how one-to-one -one this upper actually is. It has the exact same tongue with the perforations running through it. And even on the inside, you can actually see the silver sprint web reinforcement on both the lateral and medial side, which was there as a structure element. If you were planning on buying these boots with the expectation that they were gonna feel like OG F50s, that's exactly what they feel like. Moving to the rear, it has the exact same low cut as the OG, even with this little flap right here. That some people did have issues with this kind of digging into the back of their Achilles and causing some blistering or at least minor discomfort. I know I did the first few times that I wore them back in the day. And then the heel liner is probably the one aspect of this boot that probably could use a little bit of an update from 10 years ago, because I don't think it's the most comfortable. It's a really thin synthetic leather material with a micro texturing that is pretty much the same Jabalani pattern you find on the upper. So it's slightly, I don't want to say rough, but there's a little bit of grittiness to it. And it does, because of the lack of padding, I think more than anything, not necessarily feel the most comfortable or the most secure. Lockdown could definitely be better, but for the most part, if you're looking for, again, that true OG experience, they've given it to you given that they haven't changed anything about the rear of the football boot. And because this new speed frame 
unlike the sprint frame from the OG, features the exact same shaped heel counter. Uh, it just has a very familiar feel in this back heel area of the boot. And then as far as the insole is concerned, that is not true to the original. This is just the new X-Ghosted insole, has a mesh liner on top, some perforations through the forefoot, and it's made from a single layer of this black foam, but honestly not that different from the Comfort insole that would have come with the boots anyways. Actually, it would be more similar to the lightweight insole. And then there's the sole plate and stud pattern, which is the same, but at the same time, very different from the original. The general layout of the studs, you can see, is still pretty much the same. That's something that has really impacted the Adidas brand since this football boot came out. We've pretty much had every boot have some variation of this stud layout. And of course the heel counter, if you look at the rounded shape of this, that's pretty much exactly what you have on the speed frame of the X Ghosted. And of course, this heel counter, this sole plate, the original sprint frame is really what made the OG F50 Addy Zero so light. And this is really what killed carbon fiber sole plates from the Nike brand because Adidas proved that they could make a sole plate that was significantly lighter pretty much equally as strong, although this along with the carbon fiber sole plate was not necessarily the most durable thing in the world. I think modern sole plates in general seem to hold up a lot better than this, but this was significantly cheaper than any of Nike's super fancy carbon fiber elite series boots, basically half the price and almost half the weight in certain cases. So really, really impactful in terms of how it changed the game. But Adidas has kind of done the same evolutionary step, I would say, with this new speed frame and the Carbitex insert through the forefoot. This sole plate feels unlike anything else we've ever seen. And it's funny that I just said that this killed Nike's carbon fiber sole plate because this is Adidas really implementing carbon fiber for the first time seriously and doing it better than Nike or any other brand has ever done before. The responsiveness and feedback that you get from this Carbitex insert through the forefoot that's also a little bit raised compared to a normal football boot feels fantastic, you get that responsiveness, it feels nice and solid underfoot, and then the modification to the FG stud pattern, just making it more aggressive, kind of mercurial-esque in a lot of ways, is a huge improvement and arguably their best stud pattern ever featured on a pair of speed boots. And then finally, there's the weight where I would love to compare the weight of the remake to an OG in the synthetic upper variation. However, my pair here is a soft ground pair, which of course just adds more weight because of the soft ground metal studs, as well as the sole plate actually being thicker on this variation of the boot for those that don't know. But I do have this leather variation, which is, I can already tell, significantly lighter than these ones are, and they're similar in size. These are a size 9 US. The remakes that I have here are a 9.5. We'll start with the OGs in the leather upper variation, lightweight insole inside the boots as well, and they weigh in at a ridiculously lightweight 5.7 ounces, the equivalent of 161 grams, which even 10 years later, basically makes this the lightest football boot out of anything that you can currently buy. Remember those numbers and we'll throw on the remakes, which do feel very lightweight. And you can see that they weigh in at 6.3 ounces, the equivalent of 179 grams. So it's not a huge weight difference between the two. The OGs are roughly 20 grams lighter and that might not seem like a lot, but when you enter into the five ounce range for a pair of football boots, it's super noticeable. So while these are extremely lightweight, actually impressively so, the OG, I mean, it's, it's still the OG F50. They're just nuts. On feet, I am so surprised at how similar these feel to the originals. This was a football boot that I had during my teenage years and I really liked. It was one of my favorites growing up. And the fact that these feel almost exactly the same is so cool to me. Admittedly, the sole plate is very different underfoot. And I would argue that this sole plate feels significantly better than the original sprint frame. This is arguably one of the best sole plates ever to be featured on a pair of football boots. So it's arguably an improvement over the original in that regard, despite them not technically being quite as light. However, the upper, it's exactly the same. The feel against your foot, the way that it wraps your foot. I know that this sole plate is probably on a completely different last from the original, but whatever they've done, the modifi modifications that they've made really does make it feel very similar to the OGs. Even the way that they lace up visually is the same as they were when I wore them 
back in the day, you get this little extra volume right here, which is not ideal, but you can kind of live with it. I don't think it's particularly noticeable. And I will admit that this synthetic upper doesn't feel nearly as good as the new X Ghosted Point 1 if we're comparing this to the modern speed boot from the Adidas brand with laces, of course. And the heel liner, not the greatest, although it is definitely being helped by way of the pure grip socks that I'm wearing here in matching yellow and black. The most affordable grip socks on the market for just $14.99 a pair, available in a variety of different colors right now at puregripsocks.com, which will be linked down below in the description, by the way. As far as fit and width is concerned, if you fit in the OG F50s, you're going to fit in these ones as well because of the standard tongue and lacing system that runs pretty deep. There is plenty of room for expansion pretty much all the way through the upper and the toe box and forefoot area isn't overly slim or overly low in terms of overall volume. So as long as you don't have crazy wide feet, these are definitely gonna fit most people. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you're looking to order some for yourself, if you can find a pair for sale that is, I would definitely recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, and I think I speak for everybody in saying this, dear Adidas, please make more. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair, unfortunately these are sold out, but there will be links to the regular X Ghosted variants, either the 0.1 or the plus down below in the description. So if you want some of those at a discounted price, definitely go and check that out. If you have any questions regarding these boots at all or any cool stories to share about your memories of the OG F50, feel free to leave all of that down below in the comment section. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.